تمام ساتھیوں کو ایک بار پھر یادی مدد میں مولا زمان بی وتھ یو آن دس بیوٹیفل بیوٹیفل سنی سنڈے مارننگ لکس لائک امام از اسمائلنگ آن اس شائننگ ہیز لائٹ آن اس ہی از ہیپی وتھ اس میں مولا زمان gives us tawfiq tawheed himmat wa yari to do this ilmi work may mola accept this khidmat in his huzur ya mola mehrban ya mola mehrban please be with us on this journey so we may be able to do a fairly decent job listening learning and then inshallah applying to ourselves Today we will continue from few, few weeks ago where we were talking about Jamaat Khana, the Jamaat Khana in our homes, Jamaat Khana in our hearts. We were talking about a central Jamaat Khana or the place of Allah in the shape of Khana Hikmat. in khana e kaaba in shape of local jamaat khanas and then wherever we pray may it be in a smaller jamaat khana or in our home when imam gives us guidance farman in the times where we are not able to it's not safe may it be a political issues health issues or other issues within the countries or within the areas and when imam gives us the farman the imam of the time tells us to temporary hold and not go to jamaat khana then we make our homes or wherever we may be a place of prayers a place of remembrance a place of ibadat and bandagi and we continue the practice so what changes the traveling or going to a central jamaat khana changes to praying and praying within our home and the other example we were talking about when we were talking about jamaat khana in our heart because imam has given us farman to remember him even when we have 5 seconds even when we are walking sitting or sleeping and that includes when we are traveling when we are working when we are shopping so what do we do we made our heart our jamaat khana because jamaat khana is a place of remembrance so sometime it is a central sometime is local sometime within our home and sometime within our heart wherever the name of allah is taken wherever the remembrance of imam take place that is jamaat khana 
So today we are going to go into the practice and purpose in more detail look. On your screen you see some of the pictures and I try to take all the pictures of daytime not with the lights or the night view of the Jamaat Khanas and if you look at all four of them and you can see one or two on your screen and as he scrolls up you will see other two on the next page and once you have seen these four pictures now let's take a second and see what was the reason for displaying these four different Jamaat Khanas from different places now if you scroll back to the first page and very first Jamaat Khana in Karachi, Pakistan take a look at the size the shape the look and feel of this Jamaat Khana compared that to the second on the same page which is from Hunza Valley even though it is still in Pakistan but in different area so what do we see why are we talking about the look and feel of the Jamaat Khana what does it matter what Jamaat Khana looks like Jamaat Khana represents our community, Ismaili community. Jamaat Khana represents Imam of the time in that particular area. Lot of thoughts goes into building a Jamaat Khana. That is one of the reason no one can build a Jamaat Khana without the permission, without the Amr of the Imam. Because when we build a Jamaat Khana without the Amr and the Farman of the Imam, we would not be thinking of everything that must go into Jamaat Khana, into the look of Jamaat Khana, in the location of the Jamaat Khana, in the place of Jamaat Khana, in the building of Jamaat Khana, even in the color and the windows and the door. That's how much detail Imam looks at before he approves a Jamaat Khana. Now, I am talking about permanent Jamaat Khanas, not temporary Jamaat Khanas. Because temporary Jamaat Khana, we have seen, especially in Western world, could be inside an office building, which has hardly any look and feel, because it is a rental property within the business location is just a place of gathering a convenience for the Jamaat but we are talking about the permanent Jamaat Khana so if you look at the first Jamaat Khana compared to second Jamaat Khana what do you see you see a representation of the Jamaat and the Imam in that particular area it shows the glory. It shows what Ismaili Tariqa is to the local community. Now, if we go to the next 
page and look at two more Jamaat Khanas. Now look at them together. One in the Middle East in Dubai and one in Plano, Texas. Do you see the different look and feel? Imam knows and Imam approves. What a Jamaat Khana should look like in a particular city, in particular community, in particular country, in particular location. He is the one He is the one who knows the best. What is good for the Jamaat and what would be proper for the community we are going into. The community we are going into. You saw the picture of the Karachi Jamaat Khana, Hunza Jamaat Khana and then the difference between those two Jamaat Khana and then Dubai Jamaat Khana, one in Middle East, and Texas Jamaat Khana, one in the Western country. Do you see the difference? Why are we talking about that today? We've been away from Jamaat Khana for a while now. For all our life that we have gone to Jamaat Khana, we have never Look at the Jamaat Khana and its building. We have not given the second thought. Yeah, when the new Jamaat Khana is built, we take a tour and we are we remember a few things. Why this Jamaat Khana was built in such a way, and that's it. Then we forget. And then the other Jamaat comes and another Jamaat comes, and they never know what was the reason for the way this Jamaat Khana is built. And this is just the outside the Jamaat Khana. What about the inside the Jamaat Khana? Even the inside the Jamaat Khana, even the shoes company, the prayer hall, the community center, the meeting rooms, the Anandi room, and the REC centers, much, much attention is paid to the details. And every single thing has some sort of purpose. There is a purpose for each and everything that you see outside and inside. Both. So when we go back to Jamaat Khana, now, when the Jamaat Khana opens, we will have a fresh and a new look. So we can not only appreciate what Imam has done for us, but we can also appreciate the detail that Imam has put into building a Jamaat Khana in your area, in your community to sync with, to align with the buildings and community around you. If you look at the some of the uh, articles on the new Jamaat Khana which is being built uh, cr across from or close to the IIS in London how much thought Imam has put into that? How much he liked to be in sync and aligned with the environment and the buildings around that area? And not that we wanted to be in sync with them, but also to have a unique look. So when the community looks at that Jamaat Khana, they are not threatened, but they are proud to say 
this is part of my community or part of my community so not only the building they can probably say this is part of our community but these people they comes to this jamaat khana are part of our community that's how much thoughts are given i think and this is just a humble opinion of this garib and nachis ke humko bhi apne jamaat khana ko dekh kar dil ke andar aisa ehsaas aana chahiye ke imam ne kitni mehnat ki hai aur kya wajah se jo jamaat khana hamare samne hai usko build kiya hai uske andar kya wajah thi kya detail thi kyun is tarah se jamaat khana banaya jis tarah se aapke samne hai try to learn the detail of the jamaat khana try to learn that so you may enjoy and be proud of the jamaat khana that you are going into okay so now let's come to our page number 3 and i have tried to write down some of the points so we so we can learn about the jamaat khana inside and the practices and the purpose behind those practices and this is more detailed look the entire purpose of this session today is that when we return back to jamaat khana and hopefully soon we all be going back to jamaat khana we do not go to jamaat khana the way we used to go to jamaat khana but with a more affectionate with more love with a more understanding with a more knowledge with a some sense of belonging that we go back to jamaat khana and i believe it will make us happy we will receive what we are going there for we will no longer will just walk there and then walk out without any sense of happiness but going forward soon when we return we will have a fresh new look and understanding of the place that imam made for us and named it he did not name them imam's house imam bara imam's home but what does he name it jamaat khana the home for the jamaat that is your home your batini home the home for your soul and your intellect but in the physical form so we need inshallah today to have a sense of physical spiritual and intellectual jamaat khana and you can see now why we are talking about this at the end of those three lectures where we talked about the central local and homes and heart where our jamaat khanas are today and but today we are talking about a physical jamaat khana a building because inshallah soon we will be returning back to it with a new understanding so number 
was building of Jamaat Khana and what is the purpose of this? So I just wrote down one, two, three, four, and then we will talk about in detail. The building is given to us to give us a sense of centrality. It brings the entire Jamaat in the area into one single place. Individually, it gives us sense of belongings. Collectively, it gives us sense of brotherhood and sisterhood. And collectively in the area that we are living, a sense of community. Before I go forward, you notice I a sense of community, not socializing. Jamaat Khana should give you sense of community, not, I did not use the word socializing, as that cannot be the purpose. But, but, it is there when there is a time of celebration. So we will come back to this point. Look at, let's look at the number one. The building gives sense of centrality. So all the smileys, all the jamaat, may it be the local jamaat or may it they be visiting from other areas and other countries and even if they are migrating to this area instantly instantly they have a sense of centrality they know that there is a Jamaat Khana and then they move into their area because there is a central place a Jamaat Khana where they can go whenever they are ready to go to Jamaat Khana. It gives them the sense, a center, a focal point and they feel they have a sense of belonging that we are belong to this Jamaat Khana. You know, people proudly will say, oh, I am uh, I go to Burnaby Jamaat Khana. I go to Toronto Central Jamaat Khana. Or I go to uh, Plano Jamaat Khana. When they talk about their Jamaat Khana, you can see the excitement in their voice. Because there is sense of belonging they know this is my Jamaat Khana. Now we understand why Imam has given his home that he builds the name Jamaat Khana. He wants you to feel that that is your home. That is your home to come and feel that this is your home you can be secure, safe, and feel that you are at home. And when we talk about shoes company, we will talk about this feeling at home again in a second. The third point was sense of brotherhood and sisterhood. I believe this is very, very important because everyone feels the sense of centrality and sense of belonging but the feeling the sense of brotherhood and sisterhood sometimes that part is lacking missing from our hearts and our thoughts our teacher used to tell us 
that you cannot say I love my Imam, I love my Jamaat Khana, but I do not love my Jamaat. I don't like my brother and sister that comes to my Jamaat Khana. You cannot have both ways. You cannot say I love my Imam and my uh, Jamaat Khana, but not the Jamaat. Because that's a part and partial of the Imam and the Jamaat Khana. We must have, must, a love for our brother and sisters in Jamaat Khana. And there are multiple physical and spiritual and intellectual reasons behind it. Number one. They are, they are all Imam's spiritual children. How can you not like Imam's children? Think of Nurani family. Think of Nurani family. If any one of us who does not like one of the Shazada or Shazadi, the prince and princess of Imam, Jamaat is Imam's spiritual children. They are Imams, Prince and Princesses, Shahzada or Shahzadis. As we love our father, Imam, we must love his children. Sense of brother and sisterhood. And that will bring you spiritual happiness. It will bring you intellectual happiness. And also, remember, and at this point I can only talk about this Garib and Nachis. I am so poor in my ibadat, in my dua, in my tasbihat, in my good deeds, that I need my brothers and sisters in Jamaat Khana to do enough good deeds for themselves and for me too. When they do bandagi, when they do a good bandagi and when Imam shower his blessing, his nur on them, I wanted to be there next to them to catch some of the drops of those nur that have been showered on them. I probably hope and pray I will get a drop or two. But I cannot do this unless I have a feeling that they are my brother, they are my sisters. That feeling has to be there. The love for the Jamaat, because they can do a lot of things spiritually for you, and also they can do a lot of physical, economical, social things for you. So as a combinedly, we are there for each other and look at our community, how come and what is the reason that our community is so strong? That it is the reason that we are all brother and sister. Doesn't matter what business we are in, what background we are from, we may be from Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Africa, Europe, doesn't matter where we are, where we come from, what language we speak. We are poor or rich. We are professional or uneducated. We are in business or have no business. We are all brother and sister. The last point that I was talking about, sense of community, not a place for socializing. Why did I bring this subject? It may be a touchy subject for some of us. We do not go to Jamaat Khana to socialize. We go to Jamaat Khana for prayers, for dua, for our soul, for bandagi, for ilm. But if there is a time for socializing, there is a time of celebration. 
then we socialize. What it means? The socializing was not the main purpose because we are talking about the purpose and practice. Socializing was never a purpose, nor our religion practice. Socializing can be done outside the prayer hall, within the Jamaat Khana premises, but cannot be the purpose. So in this book, we write that for the children to teach them that let's say there is a family of four. Husband and wife says, all right, let's go. We're going to go to Jamaat Khana. And the one of the child says, yeah, I want to go to Jamathana so I can meet my friend. And the other child said, because I have nothing else to do, so I think there will be a good place to pass some time. I'm just giving an example. The purpose was defeated because intention was to go meet a friend and the intention was to pass the time, socializing. It was never to go and pray, to meet the Imam, to meet the Imam. That should be the central idea, the intention, the niyat. To go to Jamaat Khana to pray, to remember, and meet the Imam. That is, was the point here. So let's come to our point number two today. Volunteer and purposes are. So next time when we go to Jamaat Khana, Inshallah soon, for last whatever years we've been going to Jamaat Khana, we see the very first thing we see as we enter the parking lot. What do we see? Volunteer. How many times have we stopped and say Yali Madad to volunteer or thank the volunteer? You don't have to answer to me. Ask yourself. How many times in our life we have stopped and say Yarimari to a volunteer and thank him for his service. Imam is our role model. Imam is our role model. He says in his Farameen, I thank the volunteer. If Imam is appreciating the duty and the volunteerism. Should we not be following our Imam? Can we acknowledge the work they are doing? Rain, shine, cold, hot. They are standing outside. And I'm talking about the volunteers standing outside the Jamaskana. Think of some of the countries like Europe and, and Canada and America where it freezes in winter time. In places like Africa and, and Pakistan where the heat gets up to 115, they are standing outside in the cold and hot. Acknowledge. That will become part of your good deed. Because going to Jamaskana was purpose to do what? Good deed. Gain some good deeds. How about we start our good deed even before we enter into Jamaskana? Would you like that? We have one extra point. One extra good deed. Now you multiply that by year. 365. Twice, uh, twice a day we go to Jamaskana. There's 730 times. 
in a year. Multiply that by our lifetime. How much good deeds can we collect and write in our book of deed? Just by appreciating and saying Yali Madad and thank you to a volunteer. Can you imagine the total shared number of good deeds you could have free of charge? Think. Think. We are giving a new look today to something that we have been doing for all our life. We have a new look today. The volunteer, when we look at the volunteer, it gives us the two or should give us the two thoughts. One, sense of giving without condition. These volunteers, they are not asking anything in return. Sense of giving without condition. In our normal life, everything is a business. We give something, we take something. We give service, jobs, work, we get money. But these volunteers are giving something without condition. No conditions. They are not asking in anything in return. Nothing. What a service. Look at how Imam appreciate their service. And you can see this Farman right in front of you. I'm only going to read the bold part of it. Who are giving time of service to the Jamaat and to the Imam have my highest praise and my highest esteem. Mola says in 1976 Darbar in Karachi. Do we see that? Second part on their part is Kurbani. Kurbani is a part of our tariqa and part of our religion. In the old days, people will give the Kurbani of their life for the prophets and imam. In old days, when we had the uh, palaces and the hukumat, the jamaat would go and give their life and services of five, seven, ten, twelve years of service in the homes of Imam, Qurbani. That is part of, of our culture, is part of our tariqa, is part of our religion. Qurbani, sense of Qurbani, unconditional Qurbani, unconditional Qurbani. For the love of the Imam and for the love of the Jamaat. The next Farman, one of the most wonderful aspect of work of my Jamaat is the honorary service. Honorary service. Remember, it's no longer business. That when you work for somebody, you make some money. Honorary service, which is rendered. I want you to remember these words because this is one of the fundamentals of Islam. That is service to others. Fundamental of Islam. And what is that? Service to others. Service to your brothers and service to your sisters. And service means what does it mean? Physical or material courage to go. Physical or material means, but it also means time, it also means thought, it also means courage. Courage to go to the areas and do things which may be. Normally you would not do and I consider this to be the one of the fundamental practice 
of Islam and indeed one of our fundamental principles of the Islam and one of the fundamental of, fundamental principle of our tariqa and you could not make me happier than to encourage this honorary service the way you are doing now do we see what imam says about this let's come to our point number 3 shoe company and i'm not going to go into detail of the khidmat of shoes company but the purpose of shoes company shoes company was put there for two reasons two reasons and the amazing part is that most of us do not know the reason of having a shoes company now you can see how it was so important to have this talk to get ready to go back to jamaat khana there were two purposes of putting shoes company in jamaat khana remember we talked about one jamaat khana is the home of the jamaat and what do you do when you get home you take your shoes out when you take the shoes out in your heart in your mind you should have the sense that i am in my home i'm relaxed i'm safe i belong here this is my place this was the reason for the shoes company to leave the shoes out i mean we have seen in in, in a church and some other places of worship they don't take the shoes out but we do not do anything without a purpose and what was the purpose to give us the sense of belonging that you are home leave your shoes out there's a quranic ayat about hazrat musa alaihi wasalam when he reached to the tree and saw the light allah spoke to him and said leave your shoes outside what it means now you are home now you are home come home relax feel safe that is the purpose of shoes company second purpose those who service inside the shoes company so first point was for the jamaat now those who serve inside the shoes company what was the purpose of that because as a volunteer you can serve anywhere you could be outside the jamaat khana you could be inside the jamaat khana you could be in a nadi hall you could be anywhere but the shoes company service is very very special i wanted to put more emphasis on this service than any other volunteer service and you will see why shoes company teaches our children our youth our jamaat our older our rich and famous people amaldaran it teaches them humility humility you have to be very very humble to pick up somebody's shoes because we would not like to touch anyone's shoes we do not like to do that do we but shoes company was put there to teach us the humility to bring the humbleness in your heart in your thoughts in your mind and what is the essence of ibadat what is the essence of ibadat what does imam says be humble sit with humility 
We remember that, right? Sit in Ibadat with humility, be humble. That training for the Betul Kali Ibadat starts with shoes company. That's how important the service of the shoes company is for our youth, our children, for our older, for our Amaldaran, for our rich, those, all of our Jamaat. We need to learn humility. And that starts with shoes company. In the shoes company, and I know I've seen it in my own Jamaat Khana, and I have seen it back home in our Jamaat Khana. We have a doctors, we have a lawyers, we have a businessman, we have uh, the rich, rich people serving inside the shoes company. So, this becomes the part of their humility and if they can pick up and touch your shoes, it shows their humbleness. And what are we supposed to do when we see a volunteer? Acknowledge them. Acknowledge them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is our humility. Our humbleness. We should acknowledge them. There is a Farman. Imam says, in Golden Jubilee, uh, Farman, in France, Imam does not forget service. He simply does not forget service. Did you hear that? What Imam says, it, when you give your service to Imam and the Jamaat, Imam does not forget service. He simply does not. And what does the Imam say after that? Any family, any murid that has served the Jamaat remains in Imam's heart. Jab aap Imam ke ghar ki iski Jamaat ki khidmat karte ho, to aap kaha rete ho? Aap Imam ke dil mein rete ho. Subhanallah. Aap Imam ke dil mein rete ho. All of those volunteers present on this line, I salute you. I thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate your service. You are in Imam's heart. Subhanallah. Thank you for your service. I believe we should stop here. I still have a two more point and I'll just read this inshallah because this is a continuous subject. We will cover this and the next point was prayer hall and then Shah Didar and inshallah uh, we have a time for QA and uh, we can take some of the talking points from you. What would you like to know about our practice in Jamaat Khana? And we will add that to our subject for weeks to come because this is the preparation to go back to Jamaat Khana. Jamaat Khanas are opening soon. What are your question? What are your talking point? We like that and we will add that to our talking points. G. Uh, sir, uh, thank you, sir. At this time, I don't see any question in the chat room. Uh, but friends, uh, if you have any question, please unmute your device. And remember, if you don't have a question, you can also say, I like to know about or I like to talk about and whatever talking points you wanted to talk about. May it be Nandi, may it be sitting on the floor or whatever you think. Ji. Uh, 